Okay, hi. Um, continuing on. The righteousness of God revealed in the gospel. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. Amen. And I'm going to try not to say amen all the time, but it's kind of a habit because I just, you know, agree with the word of God. So, and knowing that it is so true and so um, real that uh, it's kind of hard not to. So, but I'm going to try not to because um, I know it can be annoying sometimes. So, uh, I apologize if I annoy anybody. <laughs> Um, okay, this is the famous phrase of Martin Luther that characterized the Reformation. The just shall live by faith. It's a quote from Habakkuk 2.4. It appears in Hebrews 10.38, Galatians 3.11, and here in Romans. So many people think that righteousness of God is revealed in the law. Someone was trying to tell me that there had to have been law in heaven, otherwise Satan would not have fallen. <laughs> it was clear that this person was looking at righteousness as a matter of law-keeping. However, the law is actually to expose sin, as we'll see. Amen. The law is a magnifying glass or a microscope to show us what sin is. Sin was in the world before the law was ever in the world, according to Romans 5.13. Amen. We don't need the law to be a sinner. We are sinners because we fell short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23. The standard of righteousness is higher than the law. The law says do not covet and do not hate and do not murder and do not steal and do not commit adultery. The law describes that and can be summed up in love God and love your neighbor. However, Jesus went the greatest length in his love to, to love even his enemies and reconcile them to himself and was willing to put up with the spitting and mocking and to endure the cross. Amen. That is a living out of righteousness that is so much higher than than what the law describes. So it is the gospel that reveals the righteousness of God. The gospel describes who Christ is and what God has done through Christ. Amen. The gospel reveals Christ and his manifest and he manifests God's righteousness in his person. Amen. The righteousness of God is higher than what the law describes. The righteousness of God is a person, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you don't have that person, you do not have righteousness. Amen. You can try to keep the law, but it still wouldn't be enough, even if you could, because you will never go to the extent to which God went. As we will see, man's sin is that he fell short of the glory of God. It's not that he just didn't fulfill a written down standard called the law. That's just the shadow. What we fell short of is God himself. The standard of righteousness is God's own character. You cannot achieve that, especially through law keeping. Amen. You need to have God himself as your life and righteousness. And so the just shall live by faith. Amen. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. Amen. The righteousness is revealed by faith in that we believe the gospel. Then the righteousness is revealed in how he deals with us through faith. The way that God is manifesting his righteousness, according to Romans 3, is apart from the law. Romans 3.21 The law bore witness to the righteousness of God. But the righteousness of God is manifested apart from the law upon those who believe in Jesus Christ. Amen. He is our righteousness and we receive him by faith in the gospel. Amen. <laughs> the righteous ones 
shall live by faith. Faith in what? The gospel and the righteousness that it reveals, which is Christ. Amen. When he died on the cross and rose from the dead, he fulfilled all righteousness. This was not just as a matter of law keeping. It wasn't just that he fulfilled a law. That was not the point. He went to the uttermost in God's righteousness, doing what absolute righteousness would do, which is that he loved us so much that he wouldn't just leave us in our sins. He made the absolute saving gesture that cost him everything. It cost him his own life. He had to give us an option to come to him and be reconciled, even though we were enemies. That's so far above and beyond the righteousness that a law-keeping type of person can even conceive of, much less us who are children of God. We're still trying to figure it out. Every day I'm learning a little more how much God loves me. Amen. His righteousness and his love go together. His love is expressed in righteousness, and God answered the big questions in the universe. How can a righteous God forgive sinners? How can a loving God condemn sinners? He answered these questions at the cross of Christ. God's righteousness is put on display at the cross of Christ, and that righteousness is so much higher than anything you can touch. Amen. You should just drop all attempts and run to Jesus like Paul did. Paul said, I had a righteousness and I was blameless according to the law, but I counted this as loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things and counted them as done, that I may be found in Christ, not having a righteousness which is my own out of the law, but that which is out of God and based on faith. Philippians 3, 6 through 11. Amen. We want to find Christ as our righteousness and lay hold of him as faith and let go of and repudiate our own righteousness. We want to have Christ. That's the only way we can please God. Nothing can come even close to to the way Jesus Christ pleases the Father. That is righteousness. That is the standard by which all will be judged. The gospel is revelation of the righteousness of God. This is so powerful. We tend to think of the righteousness of God as revealed in law. But here we are told that the gospel reveals God's righteousness. The gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes. Amen. In it, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. God's righteousness is revealed in God's record concerning his son and what he accomplished in his death and resurrection and how he dealt with our sins righteously. Amen. When we get to Romans 3, we will see that God himself is actually on trial. We think about the heavenly court in the light of our own judgment. However, when we get to Romans 3, we will see that God himself is being vindicated. It's his own righteousness that's being put on display. That righteousness is the foundation of his throne. It's the foundation of the kingdom. It's the foundation of our trust in the ages to come. We will know that everything rests on his absolute righteousness. There will never be another question again. Amen. For this reason, I believe there will not be another rebellion after the new heavens and the new earth. This is not only because we will have been recreated and will be holy and righteous as God is righteous, but the questions will have been answered. We will never wonder. In the history that the human race has been going through for the last 6,000 years, we have thoroughly explored all 
of the different ways it could have been done. All the different kind of kingdoms that could have been established will have been tried. We've tried having God be invisible and yet having human kings and laws. And we've tried many human forms of government that existed apart from any acknowledgement of God. The 20th century was the century of experimentation where everyone got to try their utopia and ended up bringing death to millions of people. Mao, Stalin, Hitler, and others. Amen. In the millennium, we will see that even having Jesus Christ as king on the earth, while men are mortal and sinful, still won't work, and there will be a final rebellion at the end of the age, end of that age. But in the new heavens and the new earth, everything will be settled, and we will see that only the bringing in of a new creation through the death and resurrection of Christ's works. Amen. We will never question again because it will have been proven that the answer is Christ and the gospel and the work of Christ on the cross. Amen. All righteousness has been fulfilled in him. Today, that righteousness is manifested upon us who believe as we live by faith. Amen. We are vindicated before God in the court of heaven. We are vindicated before the law. We are vindicated before any accusation. Also, the Christ who is the righteousness of God now indwells us. Amen. Our living by faith is not just a belief that we were forgiven, but that we have been identified with Christ. Amen. We have been crucified with him and he lives in us. Living by faith is the key to having the righteousness of the law fulfilled in those who believe and walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Amen. I'm getting ahead and we'll get into all of this in the future, in future chapters. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel, which is the description of what God has done for us in Christ and who Christ is in us. Amen. I tried. I tried. <laughs> it's just so hard because it's just, it's so good. I mean, God is just so good. And his word is so good and so true and so comforting and just, oh, he's on every page, y'all. He's on every page. The gospel of Christ is on every page. It's just, just, it's just beautiful. And I, I just, I have to say that I hate the way that people have cheapened it. And I was guilty of that as well because I was so ignorant, you know, but, um, I, I know there's a verse that talks about, uh, when you gain more knowledge, you uh, gain more responsibility. I don't know where it's at, but hopefully I'm saying it kind of right. <laughs> um, it's very true. It's like, you know, when we learn more of him, we want to speak more of him in truth and in, um, you know, uh, comfort to others and, and, uh, encouragement and, excitement of of how he how he is life for us and um yeah it's he's just awesome and it's just sad to see the apostasy that is going on um but yet it's also a blessing because he's the one that's doing the manifesting and making it really clear of you know who um, are walking by faith and not walking by the flesh and we all can get in the flesh and you know and it's just we don't harden our hearts um, and that's by you know God's grace and his um, his mercy 
and we live faith to faith. We walk faith to faith. We live faith to faith. And he brings us, you know, faith to faith, glory to glory. And it's all his doing, not ours. And we have no righteousness other than apart from our, we have no righteousness apart from Christ. Amen. And, um, I think that is very, um, comforting to know that we don't have to perform anymore. You know, um, I did a lot of performing for years and it was, uh, hell on earth. And, uh, you know, um, yeah, it, God's just so good. If, as long as you're open to hearing his, his word and the shepherd's voice and not hearing a stranger's voice and going off and being taken off his pole. Okay. Talk to you later.